But don't pick the bag. Hi, it's Patrick, and welcome to Project Concrete Jungle. Today we are at the uh, Comics Are Cool convention at Earth 638, and uh, we're going to be talking with Gilamon, uh, the independent publisher for magazines such as Major Zombie 6, uh, Cannibal Boy, uh, Private Investigator, as well as, uh, wait, one more, Agent Ray Gunsmith, right? Uh, they're going to share with us some really, really kick ass ideas about how they first started uh, the, their publishing company, about their independent comic book publishing company about nine years back. So today you're, uh, you're watching uh, episode what, um, 11, Project Concrete Jungle. Okay. Okay guys, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate the time and the opportunity to do this interview with you guys on uh, Pro Project Concrete Jungle. Uh, before we begin to talk about Gilamon, uh, let's talk about yourself. Let's talk about where you guys, what, what were you doing before you, you started the, the, the magazine? The comic book. Okay. Um, my name is uh, Lefty or uh, Julian <laughs> and um, I have been in the advertising industry before I joined uh, some of the publication in the country and uh, but my passion has always been in comics and because when I first started there are not really a lot of opportunities to be able to go full time doing comics, so um, I have to I have to do a lot of other things in order to support my passion. Which that's why I have started off in advertising industry, and then and then slowly until the opportunities come for me to make the jump over to publication, then uh, then I started working with uh, Gempa. Before that, I worked with uh, with other publications which are like Ujang and uh, Apo and the, the publication that publish Ujang and Apo and then after that well, I finally have the opportunity to go over to Gempa Stars and work there as an art director mm. so that was how I met all the friends here <laughs> You mean they're all with you as, as at um... um Yeah, three of us uh, Michael, uh, Salim and I was colleagues in Gempa Stars while Eng Huan has been, uh, used to be freelancer for, for Gempa. Yeah, she, he used to do a lot of really fantastic covers for Gempa magazines. So we have, we have always, we have been friends, and, but we, we become, uh, we have more opportunities to work together when we were in the same company. That's how, really how we started. But I think I'll let Ingwat talk about himself. Yeah. Yeah, Ingwat. Hi, hi. Uh, I'm Ingwat. Um, I have spent nearly most of my career doing comics. Uh, I started off after graduating from high school. I joined in a, a local company to produce comics for Hong Kong back, back then. 19, uh, 1990, uh, doing some uh, assisting, uh, doing background for artists, background, material, art, pages, covers, and uh, that's, that's kind of stuff. Never doing actual books, uh, actual uh, story for myself. So, just uh, also doing some years of, of my animators. So uh, um, I joined in uh, that's like uh, the year two thousand. The year two thousand, I, I joined DC. Uh, they hired me to do do a show. That's the uh, that's the year I started doing works for American Comics, and I never stopped uh, doing that until now. This here's uh, this is my ten years of doing comics. Right now I'm. Uh, on to doing some work for Marvel. Yeah. So you're you're one of the very very extremely few Malaysians that managed to Not get a chance to work with Marvel. Still, still a couple of friends that doing uh, roles for Marvel and DC. So. <laughs> That's excellent work. Okay, 
I am sorry, also known as uh, Slayer. Uh, I started out um, in the computer animation field. Then after that, uh, I live in the park. Until uh, 10 years ago, I joined the park as a comic book artist inside the park. So currently, currently I'm the comic editor of the park. Meaning um, I handle all the comic related stuff. And then the whole comic company. And uh, at the same time, I'm also doing a lot of stuff. Well, I mean, apart from doing my day job, usually I, I go home at night for Kinamo projects. Mm. Okay, how's that working for you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you feel. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. Uh, I'm Michael Chua, and uh, I start off as a comic designer. Mm. Later on, I joined the master profession as well uh, as a comic assistant. So that's uh, during the time actually that's where I met all these uh, all these fellows. And uh, later on, I started my uh, my own comics, Genki. Then later on, I moved into uh, the, to a director as a as for the graphic novels. Uh, after working around seven years plus in the masters, I I resigned, came out and started my own. Uh, mm. uh, which is close to you, uh, maybe uh, handling some events, uh, creative events. Creative events? What kind of events have you, have you done? Uh, so, so like helping uh, designers to do uh, exhibitions, things like that. Mm. But uh, it's, it's very tight job and I miss comics a lot. <laughs> so uh, after three years, I actually get back to comics as well. Uh, currently, I'm working on a uh, uh, children's magazine. Uh, which is called Arvin Arvin Collins. This is actually a character that uh, uh, one of the local DJ oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, by Jace uh, Jackman. Mm -hmm. So currently, uh, the company has uh, passed like around the year. Uh, so quite fresh in the uh, in the children of the Yeah, the, the whole Arvin genre is really picking up. Huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, would it be as, as good as uh, Port to Come in Singapore? Um, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> okay, so great. Uh, let's talk about Gilamon. What what is Gilamon? Gilamon started off as a, it's it's an idea for us to to sit together and, and work out something in as a, a creatively because at that point of time when when we were all working in in the past stars. We are sort of like in the in the position of managing people, and and we notice that we do not really have time to draw. So apart during the day job, initially our you, you, you yeah, guys draw, but you don't have the time to draw. That's, yeah, exactly. That's because we have been ironically, in, uh, ironically, <laughs> ironically truly, indeed. Because we have been uh, in in the company for some time, and slowly we. Promoted. Due to uh, the experience we have, we have been promoted to a position where we need to supervise, manage, manage people. supervise people rather than we do it ourselves. Right. Okay. So we notice that, uh, in a way, it is uh, it is good financially, but then the problem is that we do not really spend enough time drawing. Yeah. You're going away from your passion, which is to draw. Mm, we, right. We, yeah. So at that time. Uh, Three of us were talking about it, and we know we found out that three of us are facing the same problem. Because after after work, you are really tired, and and slowly we are sort of like mm, there's no production from our side. Mm. We're only supervising people's works, or and we we thought this is no good. If we keep on going like this, eventually we'll be just one of the supervisor or manager, but. There's no works coming up from ourselves, so that's how we thought. Why don't we come up with a group, uh, a group that where we could do something after office hours, stand alone things that is not related to the office works, uh, works that uh, that comes up from our heart, something that we comes comes up from our vision, something that we always wanted to do, and uh, it doesn't have to answer to a uh, company's point of view. So we thought we should instead, because if we are working on our own sometimes, 
you tend to, to to not be able to meet the deadline not so and disciplined. not so disciplined. Yeah. But we thought to have three of us to on it and constantly having uh, meetings to to check on our work in progress, it would help to speed things up and to make sure that no matter how little, how few things we are doing, at least there is something going on. Now I understand that one of you comes from Penang. Hey, I'm, you're from Penang, right? I'm from Penang, but at the time I was working here. I just moved uh, back to Penang a year uh, last year, early last year. So that was when I made the big leap uh, to doing it full time. Uh -huh. So before that, I was I have a day job. And so did it conflict with your day job? I mean, did that time? Yeah, that's that's a good question because we when we were doing when we were in uh, Gilamon, uh, we uh, we always we, whatever we do, we always uh, discuss about we are, we always have that in check whether is this going to con be conflicting with what we are doing in day job? Is it going to affect uh, our day job? Mm. And uh, because we want to be fair to the company that we work in as yeah, well because exactly. yeah, yeah uh, but we, that's why what, what, when we are doing it we, we we wanted to do something that's really different as in even language itself we are we are we are focusing on english english comics and we want to do something really uh, yeah unique independence and it may not be as commercial as what uh, the publication company wants to do, so it's something that is uh, that we could take the risk because we really have nothing much to lose, uh, <laughs> so to speak. So how, okay, maybe you can elaborate a little bit more in terms of um, what were the challenges of keeping the the, the magazine non-conflicting with your day job? I mean, do your employers know that you're you're working this on the side? Yeah. They knew? They always monitor us. Wow, I bet. They probably have be, extra cameras, right? But to be because fair, you say you don't to draw be fair, yeah. But, but yeah, to be fair to them, they have been very kind to us. Yeah. They are very they are very understanding that uh, we need to do something on our own. And uh, as long as... Because we never really publish our book in the local market. Right. So, in that sense, there's no conflicts because we do not have products come out to compete with them. That's one thing. Uh, we only do booklets, small booklets of our works, and uh, we produce apparels, uh, comic book character apparels, that we sell, we sell apparels, and each, each apparel comes with a comic book. Oh. So in that way, there's no conflict with the company. But that's a very interesting idea. Yeah, because we thought uh, in, instead of focusing on selling book, it would it would not be very nice to sure. the company, which is and we we are still working there. So we figure out a way which is which would be easier for us to deal with. So what were the earlier comic books that that was that was released? What was the first ca uh, comic character that, uh, that we? Uh, we came up with at that time three of us. Each of us have a different storyline, yeah. some sort of like an anthology, like Ashcan comic. Mm. Ashcan, and, and and you you had this Ashcan on one topic, or do you guys like you know like image comics of the days, right? Each of you have a comic book of your own. Oh uh, no, we do not have that kind of story, <laughs> uh, So what we did was we at that time. Uh, Enghuan hasn't joined us yet. Right. So I just want to uh, understand because how come there's only keep talking about the three of us? Uh? Because <laughs> <laughs> Enghuan actually. <laughs> Eng, Eng, uh, we did invite Enghuan to join us uh, in our year two, during year two, I think. Right. So, but he was, he, he has agreed to join us, but he has got so much job coming in that he really has no time to, to be involved. To be involved. So at the time, three of us, we each of us created a character, and um, and so our Ash can is always have three stories in it. Each of us would have one story. I see. There is a it's sort of a tradition. Uh, I created a, a character called uh, Major Zombie, and uh, you know, 
Yeah. Mine is an uh, Agent Ray Gunsmith. Mm -hmm. Monster, uh, Agent that had monsters. Very simple story. Myself, I'm doing a Cannibal Boy. Yeah, uh, uh, Cannibal uh, Investigator. Investigator. <laughs> Cannibalism. Cannibalism. They, yeah. That the boy needs to eat the victims, those dead victims, and through eating it, he would he would have flashback memory of that person. What's going on? Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so how do you get really, how do you get inspiration to, to come up with all these characters? <laughs> I'm experiencing yourself. <laughs> because it doesn't go around eating, right? Because when you're doing commercial comics, there's some topics that you are you cannot touch, you cannot touch. Uh -huh. It's like uh, uh, pointing a gun in the piece of things like that. Right, right. So, so uh, you know, yeah. essentially, uh, people smoking, uh, uh, there's a facial, facial, and so on. Sensation, yeah. You guys do your work. Sensation, yeah. So, so. But I'm not saying we love to do that, but just. <laughs> Because some some story needed. Sure. Yeah. Of course, because you can't be you can't be showing kids around that everyone uh, that the hero is taking drugs and when yeah. when when the, the comic book is targeted to someone that is what ten years old. Yeah, correct. Right. So there's question ethics. Uh, what we did is uh, what uh, the mainstream doesn't allow. Right. Yeah. So we are, we are pushing. The so you're the rebels. Yeah, we are pushing the limits and doing something that even even the part they also don't allow. So what were the challenges of uh, bringing the comic book to life, bring, bringing Gilamon to, to life? Yeah, let's talk about year one. What, what, were the, what were the early challenges of uh, bringing up the, the, the brand? The, the first time is, uh, the first time is uh, the Ashcan. Ashcan is t-shirt. Yeah. At that time, uh, we have no experience in uh, producing our own movies. That's why we go to Singapore. Yeah, we really. all the It's very ironic uh, because we have been working in a in a very decent uh, publication firm, one of the one of the best publication comic book publication oh, yes. in the country. Yeah, uh, Gumba Star has been one the leader in the industry. Yeah. And what when we started Gilamon, we did in our day job we are doing one of the uh, very good high quality. Uh, with a lot of support from printer and, and production people. Yeah, but when it comes budget, to, yeah, yeah, we have all the budgets there. But when it comes to our own stuff, we ended up doing Xerox, uh, we cut ourselves, we staple, and you know, it, it's fun in that sense because we are doing a lot of lo fi, very hand, on hand. Uh, then go to like uh, children's house. Yeah, uh, uh, they all hand, hang, hang out at my house and uh, we just do, do cutting. cutting and. And at that time, in, in order to save costs, we printed everything Xerox, uh, eh? we, we photocopied them in black and white, and then we we actually uh, made this rubber stamp, uh -huh. and then uh, of our logo, and we stamp, stamp it in red color, so that the books look like it's in red and black and white, you see? so there's a color in it, but it's all hand stamp. <laughs> So we did a lot of uh, very Frank Miller. Very <laughs> yeah, yeah, handmade Frank Miller thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we started actually we we print we started. Oh, you also create yourself. Yeah, the the, wow. the first few uh, t-shirts we, we did it on, on our own. And then we found that we are not much good at it. Uh, we spoil a lot of t-shirts, <laughs> so we decided to let the pro do it only. And then the second and third batch. <laughs> so is it? I mean, how many how many comics do you do you produce uh, on the first run? Uh, we had we have three. We have three ash cans. Uh, actually, all the ash cans have been compiled in uh, in this in this big graphic novel. We, now we, we yeah, it's now it's currently professionally our, produced. Our print. Our print. Yeah, wow. Apparently. And uh, this even even with this book, we are trying to cut costs. As in, uh, we we went and buy color paper. And uh, to print on black and white, so it looks like it's got color in it. Yeah. yeah, it's actually color paper and it's actually a black, a black and white print. So we have to do uh, these are these are the challenges that we don't have to face in our day job, but we are doing it, uh, on our own because everything comes on ourselves. We had we had a quite a big break 
when we took part in 2006, when we took part in, that was year three, yeah. when we took part in one of the MDEX uh, Intellectual Property Challenge, IPCC. And IPCC challenge. Yeah. yeah, that was the very first IPCC challenge, and we and we managed to get the grant. Uh, we won and we got the grant. That's how we could produce this book. Mm. So this is how uh, we managed to print this book at the time. So we compile all the all the uh, ash can into into this big book. So uh, and, uh, and later we joined the SDGs. Yeah, and we, we, we went to Singapore for the Singapore Toy and Comic Convention. Right. Uh, we launched the book in Singapore, uh, the first, uh, was it the first one? Uh, second one. Second, second one. The first, we already have this book, but we don't have, we don't have enough to sell. Yeah. We, we had it there for display, and the second year we were selling them. The second year we got the grant, and then we managed to, to print and to produce it. So what is the what is the market for comic books in, in Malaysia? I mean, in your in your own perspective, I mean, I, I used to be a, a comic comic book reader ever since uh, until I grew up. <laughs> I, frankly, I miss comic books. I really really miss comic books. In fact, you know, I, I'm going to meet up with uh, I'm going to interview the guys from uh, Earth uh, Comic Book Shop, and one of my early passion was to. You know, have my own comic book shop. You know, mm. but yeah, that's a different story. So yeah, let's talk about let's talk about um, your perspective on the market. I mean, you guys are one of the very very first and very obscure <laughs> group that came up with a comic book that is complete of you know equivalent to the underground comic scenes of the of, of the of the US, yeah. right? Something that is very that is away from the the normal genres that we have here. Here we normally have the the comedy genres. Right, the Gila Gila of the world, the gun parks of the world. Mm. And um, how is that like? What, what gave you the idea to, to reach that? Or do you just like, oh, I just love Frank Gila, I just love comic books, and you know, I don't want to do the Gila Gila stuff, and I just want to go into the, the mainstream comic book class. I, I think when we, when we did something for, for Gila Mon, it is something that we wanted to see coming out in, in, the, in, in this comic book form. Something that is a vision that we have. Mm. And uh, because we are self-published, we don't have to consider too much of it. It's, it's considered too much of whether it will work or it won't work. Yeah. So it is something that, a risk that we, we took. Uh, mm. uh, because we believe that this, whether what is the what is the reaction is one thing, but before we would know what is the reaction, the key thing is that we would like to come up with something that we think is good. Yeah. Uh, and the rest is really up to uh, you know, the market. And also consider the fact that you guys are already in the market, so you roughly know what is cool and what is not. So, so yeah. And then we are trying things that the mainstream publisher would not. Do. Because we, we know and we understand why they don't do it. Sure. Yeah, and we thought, you know, small group like us, we got we less risk involved. Uh, so we thought it is it is good for pe people like us to go and try all these things and to see the reaction. Great. Okay. Uh, last two question. What would be the top three things you want to share with someone who wants to get into comic books? Someone who wants to do what you have just done? Start with you.
sign a picture, things like that, or you know, my bed, you went to bar. Can we try everything? Try everything. A lot of ways, uh, quite a lot of ways, uh, sending our folks to the following publications or, or, or things like that, meeting out some events and things like that. Uh, but one of the breakthroughs is that uh, we actually participate on the Singapore Comics Commission, which is actually uh, where is the, where is the comics events that you hear them. Since then, we participate every year and, and meet out with a lot of people. Uh, my suggestion is always be uh, you know, mm -hmm. have the hunger. Yeah. Because it's the hunger that drove you guys to do the things that you've done. Something. Yeah. yeah. You know, also, above all that, uh, why creators create is because you have something to say. Yeah. That's the main point. That's the whole thing that uh, uh, drives you to do uh, endless night uh, learning. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta have something to say that you thought it was uh, very interesting for you to let the uh, readers know that you think this might work. The market uh, has had it. You can try it. Always experience, uh, experimenting things. Uh, uh, but then you have to have some, some level of financing support. Mm. Okay. Uh, a dear friend of mine, uh, just who is very successful in the financial industry and and just doesn't understand why would I do something that clearly you know it would not benefit you a lot financially. I mean the effort that we put in, it doesn't justify if you're talking about how much you're going to earn back. Yeah. And uh, actually it's not only... The thing is that uh, it's, it's not only about, about the money. Uh, when you're talking about uh, fulfillment, not only that you, know, you, you put in effort, uh, you got the money to bring you fulfillment, but sometimes, like what Ehwan said, you know, you got something to tell, you got something to, 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 to put out. It's uh, when you put it out, when, when you've done the stuff, it's already a fulfillment there. Yeah. Sometimes it's it's not only it, it, it would it is a fulfillment for your heart, fulfillment of your your of your uh, subconscious mind or whatever. That that is also part of fulfillment of life. Right? Yeah, that's true. That's the just, essence of uh, entrepreneurial spirit. Just yeah. like <laughs> Steve Jobs saying, never live on other people's life. Yeah. <laughs> we, we really take yeah. that very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, last question: Where do you where do you think you guys are right now? Do you feel that you're you're, you're still, uh, you know, working really hard uh, during going through zero, or do you feel that you've reached superhero stage? I don't know really. I think we are just another phrase. Yeah. So now it's like uh, recently we just published this book. This so, all these are what we did recently last year. Last year. This too was published last year. Uh, this was done by uh, Salim and Inghua. Six. Uh, this story is done by Salim and Inghua. And uh, Inghua did this major zombie with me. So uh, two, two story. Yeah, one is one is by myself and one is by Inghua. So Inghua came into the picture la last year when finally he had a short break and. Uh, able to he himself agreed, agreed to do it and then we just you know just grab him <laughs> <laughs> so well yeah and then this year for this year's uh, Singapore convention uh, we published this book uh, with pretty much uh, uh, drawing uh, on the cover and inside is uh, it's by myself so this is the first phrase I think in the coming year we'll keep on producing stuff we will yeah so actually Zero to hero, we, I think what we are experienced now or what we are looking forward to is even though this is our nine, we are, we are into our ninth year now, actually the, the passion or the feeling we have is still pretty much the same. We are still trying and trying, we are still coming up with new things and we, the test the market. Started off with we trying apparels uh, with with 
little comic books as freebies to now we have self-published some of our works actually published in formats that we think would be good for the artwork and, and our next phase will also be uh, new new creations that will involve all of those great looking forward to it i mean you guys did a very very good job with the comic book right yeah. nine years yeah wow that would be the big that itself is already a journey you know what i mean yeah so we are what we are working on now is actually for our 10th anniversary great <laughs> Okay, looking forward to it. So yeah, <laughs> continuous success everyone. So thank, thank you very much for, you for, for having it. <laughs> Alright. Thank you.